Hey, Stellar Woman fans, I'm your host, Mary Rec Torres. Stellar Woman shines a light on female leaders making their mark in time. Today, I'm really pumped. We have two special guests joining me on the podcast. The first is my host, Cody Gerfein. She's a deputy global head of marketing at one of Relativity's partners, Exeger. And she's also the co-chair and founder of Exeger's Women's Initiative Network, aka Exeter Wins. Cody, excited to have you on here. Thank you so much, Mary. And I am excited to welcome Meredith Feynman. Meredith is the CEO of Finepoint, professional speaker and author of Brag Better, Master the Art of Fearless Promotion. So welcome, Meredith, to the Stellar Women podcast. And Meredith, um, thanks for chatting with us. Yeah, I'm excited to be here um, and chatting with you both about all things Brag Better and beyond. Before we dive into cues, because I know we have a lot, my co-host for the Stellar Woman podcast, Mila, and I came up with this section that we're trying out. It's called Highlight of the Week. And the goal is just to start things off on a positive and fun note. So Meredith, I know we'll be putting you on the spot so I can go first. My highlight is quite bittersweet. I finished season four of The Crown on Netflix, which Mm. I had fallen (laughs) in love with and it was Princess Diana season, so it was also very heart-wrenching, so got to find a new show. Um, all right, well, first of all, I loved The Crown, and I that is what I call a perfect puzzle show, which is a new genre I've invented during the past year. Fun fact, Emerald Fennell, who directed um, the amazing movie Promising Young Woman, plays Camilla Parker Bowles on The Crown, so that's fun to know. Um, okay, so my highlight of the week, and I love this segment, is that Laura Tolshin and I, and Laura is the co-chair of Exeter Wins, have tickets to the New York Botanical Garden to see the Kusama exhibit on Friday. So art is back. That is my real highlight aside from this podcast. Meredith, what about you? That is so lovely. Um, I gotta think, I'll do a professional one and a personal one. I am starting my Brag Better boot camps and I have sold out June's, sold a couple corporate ones, and that's really exciting. That's my, you know, new focus. Personally, I'm finally going to buy a new couch, (laughs) which is like very much, very much I'm in my 30s, but couches drive me insane because the only ones I like are a bazillion dollars and they take eight weeks to get to you and I do not understand. Sure, so expensive. I've been looking for a dresser. I'm like, oh, maybe it'll be, you know, a hundred bucks. No, how naive I was. You know, another thing that I do is sustainable fashion by way of resale and secondhand and vintage. So I'd say most of my stuff, um, you can totally find a dresser for a hundred dollars. It depends on what condition, depends on how down and dirty you're willing to get, which I very much am, but couches, you really can't do that. Great. So Meredith, you are an author about, of Brag Better. I would love to hear about your book. I am a writer and just think it's so cool when people publish books. So I'd love to hear what was your purpose for writing the book and tell me a little bit about the writing process. I'm curious. Yeah. So first and foremost, I'm a writer. Um, I am 34. I started freelance writing when I was 18. So it's always been, I'm a writer first, business person second. I don't even see them as I mean, people, people always told me they were mutually exclusive, but they're not at all. I think writers and identity, and, you know, entrepreneur is occupation. Um, anyway, that's a different podcast. But so I co-wrote a book that came out in 2018 uh, called Microtrends Squared. I do a lot of advising on the book industry. I've done book press for about seven or eight years. I am more of a poltergeist than a ghost, uh, or, or which means that like I usually like my name on things, but I've written dozens of book proposals with a lot of that. Um, so I feel very, very lucky that Brag Better was not my first book. It's the first really with my name on the door and all of my IP and ideas and, and methodology. And I, I mean, I, I fought for it to be published for, uh, I don't know, seven years. And, and it was a real whole long fight for many years people told me it just wasn't a good idea or there wasn't a place for it or I should be using the word brag which the basis of this book is the idea that your accomplishments are worth talking about and there's a strategic and comprehensive tactical way to do it uh, so that you get what you want and people won't know what you've done until you tell them and so this is a skill it's a learned skill it's a muscle to flex one you'll be using throughout your entire career but it's one that you can learn even though it's scary and hard it's it's absolutely necessary, and particularly in times like this, where you literally cannot drop by your boss's office 
um, and update him or her uh, on your wins. It's it's just incredibly essential. So the process, you know, I came up with the idea in October of 2013. So it's been a it's been a very long time coming. A lot of publishing is hurry up and wait. You know, we don't have time to get into the whole story. But I wrote the book itself very quickly. I wrote it in six months. But I had been toying with these ideas for a long time. It really tested my ability as a PR person, as someone who understands media and messaging and visibility and voice to have it come out at the height of COVID. I mean, we're still at many heights, but what I mean is it came out in June of 2020. It was supposed to come out in May. um, And it was at a time when it had to be delayed because Amazon was prioritizing medical supplies. I mean, it was, it was really just a very wild time. I found deft ways to promote it and get the word out, which, you know, I, I really have to really walk the walk since I wrote this book on it. It's been, it's been a crazy, crazy process, but overall a great one. So Meredith, I, I would love to start out with the terms you use in your book, um, just to kind of make sure we're on the same page. So, you know, at Exeger, and I do marketing at Exeger, as, as Mary said, people always ask me, you know, how do you position yourself, you know, or post on LinkedIn or whatever platform about their work? Um, and they, they just honestly crave the tools you provide. And, and that's why I'm so excited to speak with you. Now, in your book, you call this group of people, and let's hopefully I'm getting this right, the qualified quiet. So I'd love to start with, like, you know, what is that? What is the qualified quiet? And how do you know if you're the qualified quiet? Yes. So let's back up and do sort of like a glossary of terms. So I started my company, Fine Point, which now is, you know, leadership and professional development, speaking and training, brag better boot camps, corporate and interpersonal. I started as a PR firm. I also had always simultaneously built this personal brand for myself, started to represent people. And I realized that nobody knew how to talk about themselves. And it was very frustrating. But I also realized that the habits of publicists, the packaging, the pitching, the storytelling, just understanding how to craft a compelling pitch and and get what you want was super valuable to everyone around me. The word brag popped into my head in late 2013 after a client of mine didn't go on TV because she didn't feel qualified and she had been in a presidential administration on the topic. It was not even a question. Uh, And I hung up the phone with her and I wrote braggart in the margin of my book, which I put parentheses around the word art. So it was originally, you know, the art of bragging, how that became brag better. I honestly don't know, but that's how I've chosen to encapsulate this idea. I define bragging as stating facts about your work strategically and cohesively to advance your career. Um, And so then my audience, which you could argue is everyone to some degree, is the qualified quiet, people that have done the work but don't know how to talk about it, a strength and not a weakness. And it is irrespective of gender and irrespective of level of seniority. Those are the two main things. This is how I define bragging and what bragging better means. This is how I define, you know, people who know what they're doing and see other people who have done a third of what they've done, but get all of the prizes or recognition or projects. And it's just terribly unfair. And it comes from also my frustrations being in and around media and seeing that we just straight up reward the wrong voices. We reward loud. You know, the qualified quiet can kind of be anyone. And, and it is a strength because the difference between you and someone who is just bragging and hasn't done the work is that you have. And, and so the one-two punch of having done the work and knowing how to talk about it is, is unbeatable. So we've established people don't want to quote unquote self-promote or, or use the word brag, but I love that, you know, you've really said that you've reclaimed the word bragging. And I'd love to know some examples of, you know, how does that play out? I guess, what are some examples of how to reframe what traditionally is a brag into words that people can feel comfortable with, but also get the point across? You know, many people have told me not to use the word brag. I'm also in the business of getting your attention. I wanted a phrase that I thought was compelling, that I thought would capture people, that I thought I could build a framework around. We don't have a vocabulary to talk positively about professional accomplishment. And that's why it feels scary and icky and anxiety producing, you know, as women, that's a whole other thing. As anyone who's not a white man, that's a whole other thing. But these words don't exist so much so that as a writer, as someone who's first stop is language, you know, I'm forced to use a word that is a big hurdle. I mean, brag is, is not a pretty one. So I decided to redefine it instead of make up a word, which is almost impossible to do um, and, and break through with that as too hard. You know, use a cutesy phrase. You know, we have a couple things, you know, hype yourself up, 
that is how I did it and decided to to reclaim it. It was a fight for the title, but it's ultimately one that I'm glad that that I did. But it's not a pretty word. It elicits the exact same feelings in everyone. But really all it is, is showcasing your work so that people can say yes to you. I mean, that's, that's all that it is. Nobody will know unless you tell them because they're not going to seek it out. We're still in an emergency. We will be, we're all traumatized. We're all at home. Everybody's dealing with joblessness. They're dealing with childcare. They're dealing with other, you know, medical crises. So you have to tell them because they just won't know. And if they don't know, they can't give you what you want. They can't give you the recognition, which could look like money, which could look like time, which could look like projects, which could look like a new job just straight up won't know. And so, you know, it wasn't as effective to be like, you know, this book is called communicate your work, (laughs) like, you know, so, so that's, that's really what it is. It's you're, you're showing not telling by being as explicit as you'd like people to be. Yes. And I love the point you used earlier that your manager, whomever is not gonna, you know, in the 10 minute break, they have be like, oh, what's Mary or Cody doing? Let me go see. There, you have to speak for your own work. It's not going to speak for itself. And on the Stellar Woman podcast, we like to give very like specific takeaways. So if someone's a little bit more reticent to talk about their work or don't know directly how to go about doing that, what would be one or two recommendations you have, Meredith? There are a couple core messages, which is that your accomplishments are worth talking about. Uh, full stop. The bra- best brags I've heard are never the most senior and they're never the sexiest. It's whatever you're excited about. It is never, ever about reinventing the wheel. I have trained, spoken to, worked directly with thousands of people on the on these issues. It's never like, oh, I have to go get this degree. Oh, I just have to kill this project in order to start bragging about X and Y and Z. You work with what you have. You have enough, um, enough, 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 which, you know, we have a lot of sign to that word too. Um, And then understanding that you're so not alone in these feelings of anxiety or doubt or dread or fear or disgust or disdain. So a lot of times, you know, feelings that are anxiety-based are very alienating and and feel very isolating, but it's pretty universal. Understanding those things, starting to think about opportunities. So basically every time you open your mouth and that opening your mouth could mean typing something out and it's, you're communicating about your work to someone else on social media in, you know, while you're waiting for a Zoom, in a, you know, maybe in-person someday networking session. These are opportunities and not burdens. And all of those small actions, whether it's, you know, making sure to introduce yourself thoughtfully and strategically to the right people, or having a business card that you're excited about and it's fun and memorable, all of those little pieces about you and your work end up building this mosaic of who you are and what you do. So do you ever need sponsors to help talk about your work and to decision makers, or maybe that they have access to more than you do? And, and if so, you know, how do you, how do you find those people? And is it harder, you know, to your earlier point in this virtual environment that we found ourselves in? Yeah. So bragging better is a team sport. Um, it's part of your job. If you're someone that people listen to, I talk to men about this a lot. I talk to white people about this a lot. If you are someone we listen to, which means it's very tied to privilege, uh, you know, the ability to be heard and to use your voice freely and be someone that people listen to is, is a right, but ends up being, you know, more of a privilege more than anything else. It's part of your job to brag on behalf of and in service of others. And then conversely, yes, you need to find advocates because what breaks through in messaging, communication, and telling people what you do is repetition. Are you saying these things over and over and over again? They're coming from multiple sources and consistency. How many times are people hearing this and how similar is that message? Because that's how people retain information. So yeah, I mean, you want to brag on behalf of others and you want to ask them to do so on your behalf. Cannot do this all yourself. It can be mentors. It doesn't have to be, but it's starting to have those conversations. How can I help promote your work? I'm really proud of this project I did. Would you be open to sharing it with your network? Would you be open to sharing it on social media? I have this point I want to make in a meeting and I'm nervous about it. And I also know that, you know, the more times someone here, you know, multiple voices reinforce a message, are you open to echoing my sentiments? Um, How can I help you look good? So those sorts of things, starting to have those conversations with coworkers and colleagues, bosses, direct reports is really important. 
And one of the topics that Meredith, you and I have discussed prior to this podcast is that if you give the qualified quiet, you know, quote unquote, the tools to vocalize their very important views, you likely end up with a much more diverse kind of unified voice or multiple voices representing an organization in the market. And this just feels like a complete natural progression of your work. So are, are you currently helping forward thinking companies navigate this increasingly important diversity topic or diversity initiatives um, in their companies? And are you empowering them with your tools to do this purpose and and really what's next for you but yeah I work with a lot of companies to have these conversations to make sure the women in their companies feel like they're heard allyship is also sometimes shutting up on behalf of others and amplifying their voices um but yeah I mean we need to have a, a landscape of voice that reflects what people look like racially ethnically gender, you know, parody, uh, you know, a lot of that is, is really pie in the sky because what will it take to get there? I think a lot, but definitely important. And it's funny because, you know, more diverse boardrooms, companies, leadership teams only lead to more money. So like Mm -hmm. at its baseline, it has been proven over and over and over again, like the more diverse leadership of a company like the better it does so you can't really argue with it at that point save for like certain people wanting to retain power (laughs) no there's innovation there's better business case and and as you said bottom line with your wins group and i'm part of row out we're very involved in idb initiatives at our respective companies and i know this topic is like personal but i i think it's true the statistics show diverse teams thrive and it's going to help your company so I think relating to different stakeholders on that level and also on that it's the right thing to do for your fellow human is super important. So that's really great that you're working on that as well. It's free to echo someone's voice. It's free and it's easy to promote their work, to post something on your social media. It's a great habit to practice. Meredith, as we wrap up here, where can our listeners get to know you, see what you're up to, and most importantly, get your awesome book? Yes. So I'm very internetable because I have to walk the walk. Uh, MeredithFeynman.com. I'm on all platforms at Meredith Feynman. Uh, you can order Brag Better wherever you get books. If you go to brag-better.com, there's a full list. We're on Bookshop. We're on Amazon. There's a list of Black-owned independent bookstores carrying the book. You can get the Kindle. You can get the audiobook. If you do get it, give me a shout because I try to be good about sending out book plates, which are sign stickers so you can have a signed copy because I can't be IRL to sign any books. Great. Well, listeners, I am going to be posting a link to where you can purchase Meredith's awesome book in the blog transcript, and we'll be posting about it on our social media. So really, really encourage you all to check it out. And I want to thank Cody for being an awesome co-host and Meredith. So, so excited you could join us. It was such a pleasure talking with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled to do it. Thank you so much for having me. Stellar woman, I'm Mary Rectoris. And I'm Cody Gerfine. Signing. Signing um. off. <laughs> we'll have to get better, that one. <laughs> <laughs>